Hello everyone, and welcome to In the Workshed. This is Breaking Character LARP, and today I'd like to talk to you about how we're going to improve this little foam flinging blaster. This is, of course, the Adventure Force Thundershot. And if you saw our last video, over there in the corner, you would see that one of my biggest complaints about this is it would not take every nerf dart that we had. It will gladly take the Adventure Force darts, these guys here, oh, not that one. <laughs> It'll take the Adventure Force darts pretty well, but I tested it with a few of the other uh, nerf darts we have laying around. Uh, a knockoff one, some zombie strike ones, a couple different waffle heads, and it, it doesn't fit right. And again, my biggest issue with this was, you want to be able to use this piece with any kind of dart without having to concern about what type of ammo you're using. You don't want to be in a firefight and get this thing jammed on you and suddenly you're going to lose your character, all because you didn't look at what type of dart that you used. So that's going to be our improvement right there. We're going to try to find a way to make sure this thing will fit all sorts of different darts. Because I do like the shape of it. It's a really fun, unique shape. Uh, so that's our main goal here. We're going to crack this thing open, see what we could do, see what we can modify to make sure we can get all the darts in here that we want to shoot with it. So let's not waste any time. Let's crack this thing open. Let's first start off by taking this thing apart. Let's see what we do. Oh, oh, that's great. That's perfect. Um, we talked before about how we didn't like the the handle of this piece. And if it comes out that simply, oh yeah, that's awesome then. Um, that means we might be able to just replace this with a different handle. We might just be able to replace that entirely with a different handle. So that's going to be great. That will be cool. Get the rest of this open. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're so smart. Oh, I love it. So, um, it looks like we might just be able to lift this whole thing up out of here. But that's actually not what I'm concerned about. I want to make sure. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. That is great. And this is all just one. Yeah, that's just one. Like, mo oh, no, it does come off a little bit. I don't want to peel that off because I. I think it's glued. I feel like it's uh, glued together. So the barrel is just one separate piece that comes straight off. That is awesome as well. That's great. Very carefully remove. Yeah, that is, oh my gosh. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it so much. I love it because this is just gonna make uh, modifying this and taking this apart for people at home very easily if that if this whole mechanism just falls right out and does that oh yes yes look at that it just comes right out that is so perfect oh Busby I love you this is great and now one of the issues that I've seen people do to improve their um, their blasters is to remove the air restrictors and sometimes to remove uh, I can I, I know you can barely see it up here I'll get a, I'll, I'll get a better shot later um, Sometimes they remove the sticks that are in here. That That's what actually holds the darts in place. So you can see if you have to push down kind of harder on that. Oh boy. Uh, if you push down kind of harder on that, they kind of fall in. So that's an option. We could remove those um, and it might actually make the, the, the blaster improve shooting. My question is if I remove those, will that actually make it... That actually have the bullet, the the darts sit in there tighter. Removing that. Well, if I ruin it, I ruin it, and at least it'll make good Warhammer terrain. And again, the benefit of this is that it is um, only ten bucks. So I have a pair of uh, like wire cutters. These are actually trim spruers. We use these um, again for Warhammer, but the um, the real purpose I think is for floral decorations. And all I'm going to do is just come in here. And I'm going to do a test on one of these to see if I ruin the gun. So that's what's inside there. That is what holds the dart in place. So... That might be it. That might be it. Look at that, it sits in there perfectly. All right, so um, here's what we're gonna do. I do not wanna go through 
and ruin all of these. <laughs> ruin all of these if this doesn't work. So I'm gonna reassemble the gun um, and see if that's going to impede uh, anything. See if that impedes any portion of the functionality of this. Seems like it's working good. All right, so let's find, here is our trouble guy. Goes in. I think we're good. Let's, let's do one more test. Let's just do one more test just to make sure. Normal adventure zone dart. She ain't coming out. Fires. Adventure Zone darts, that's it. Let's do it to the rest of them. If you don't have a pair of these like little tiny pliers like this, um, you probably could use a, a little uh, box cutter to reach in there if you wish, but you should be able to find something that can get in there very easily and snip that plastic away. And again, we're only cutting a very small portion of this away. Again. All we're doing is just going to get in there, cut one side, oh. <laughs> come in there, cut the other, and it should fall out that easily. And that's it. Now we're done. Now that we got all the pins out, this thing should be able to accept any kind of Nerf dart that we want to throw in here. Now, I'm going to take this a step further as a LARPer. Uh, I want this to have a more realistic paint scheme. So what I'm going to do is, since it's already disassembled, I'm going to go ahead and start painting this now. Uh, a few things to note. First things first, you do want to sand some of the pieces of plastic, especially like this piece here. I don't know if you can see that very well in the camera, but this top portion is definitely um, a little bit more textured, so the paint should hold onto that really well. But then when you come down here, it's very shiny. So we want to rough up as much of the plastic as possible, especially places that your hand's going to be on. You want to rough that up so the paint's going to adhere a little bit better. Number two, we also want to keep in mind safety here. Here in the United States, you must have an orange cap on your toy guns. It's just a safety thing. So Busby here actually, sorry, Adventure Force, uh, actually left us a nice little rim here around it. I think it's just part of the plastic keeping it together, but that's gonna be a perfect little nice rim there to, to denote that this is our toy gun. So I'm gonna go wood for the handle pieces here. If I could pop these, oh, and they do. Ah, oh, they do. They just have little push tabs on the back here. Pop those guys off. I'll be painting the handles wood, because of course a wood handle would work. I'm gonna paint the body black. I'm gonna paint the barrel and the receiver and probably the trigger and the hammer all a, a gray color, a, a silvery kind of gray. And that should give us enough contrast. I like going by the um, the Warhammer rules when it comes to painting. You know, have three distinct colors. So we'll have a black, we'll have a brown, and we'll have a silver for the rest of these. One of the things that I like to do um, is take off as many labels as possible. So for you right now, we don't need to sand you at all. You're pretty good. You guys are all trash. Um, done. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little piece of plastic on the top there that's going to be seen and touched. So as long as we sand that up, that's going to be good. So we're <laughs> doing pretty good so far. What I want to look for is labels. And there's no labels on our piece there, our chamber. Our barrel doesn't have any labels. Thankfully, our uh, handle has no labels. And this part does. I really want to take off the Busby portion here. That's the little la little label there. It has the year made in China. And of course, Busby Toys, that's going to come off. This lightning bolt design, you can see on the inside, um, there is a raised bit of plastic there. So I do not think we'll be able to take this down to just straight flat. Making this flat might be a little bit more difficult. But I am going to hit it with the sander and see if I can kind of didn't, uh, take off some of that. Uh, again, you are always welcome to use just sandpaper for a job like this. You can sit here and I will 
Done. Uh, I like to use sometimes wet wipes just because it's... Yeah. You can use a, a moistened paper towel, but uh, sometimes a wet wipe... Oh, those are really wet. These are like baby, you know, baby wipes. Uh, they're already pre-wet there for you, so you can come in here and grab all those shavings off because you don't want any of that on um, when we begin painting. And there we go. It's off. That simple. Uh, there's a little B there, but we'll get that off. Don't worry. Um, again, you are more than welcome and happy to go through and use sandpaper for the entirety of this. Uh, just because I want to get this video out on time, I'm going to go a little fast with some of these pieces. So uh, sit back and enjoy the sped up version of me sand sanding all of this. And I'm These are going to be the parts that you're probably going to touch the most. Be very careful because uh, my hands are now full of powder. But what I'm going to do quickly is I'm just going to sand the trigger here. The same with this hammer now. Let's see. It's going to be primed for just a little bit. Again, you, you don't want to keep your guns primed for long t periods of time because that's, you're asking for trouble there. Alright, I'm going to release the, the hammer there a bit. And I'm going to wipe all of this down. I'm going to try and clean all of this off and get all of this powder as much as possible off. not in the mood to, to ruin this after we, we did all this work in here. But I'm going to try just a little bit. I'm going to try just taking it down just a little bit. It's like the Tampa Bay Lightning symbol or something. <laughs> 18 million over the salary cap. Not that I know anything about that, you know. Instead of trying to take it all the way down to bare flat plastic, uh, I just try to mess it up a bit and just try to shape it. So you're, you're gonna have this this uh, raised portion here, but if I sand this right, it shouldn't be very noticeable. Yeah, it's not that bad. We'll do the other one too. To paint the body, uh, I'm going to use this Rust-Oleum black matte paint. Uh, I'm a big fan of Rust-Oleum. You can get the can of this for under $10. For our handles, I'm going to use this brown satin uh, Rust-Oleum brown. Because I use this color in other uh, pistols as well, so this will be a nice way to, to continue that shade among all of my uh, pistols. And sadly, uh, I made an oopsie-daisy error. It turns out I'm actually out of silver spray paint. So, uh, <laughs> I, have, I have a trick here. This is what I'm going to use, okay? I'm going to go with a black, the same black that we're using to cover the, uh, the body of the gun. I'm going to use that to spray paint these all parts black. So that's going to be a really good uh, first layer to make sure it really sticks to it. Then what I'm going to use is I'm going to try to use some of this Army Painter Silver. Now this is paint that's supposed to be used for miniature wargaming. I use this on my Cities of Sigmar and I use uh, a different color of this for my Lizardmen army that I have. Um, and this is great stuff, but the price of this is way, could be way more expensive than this. So I would not argue to paint all of your uh, blasters with army painter paint, but this stuff's great, I love this. So I'm gonna start with a black base, and then I'm gonna go over it with some silver. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to like, stay a little bit above the air and do like a brushing of silver. So it's gonna be a dark, it's gonna be dark, but it's gonna have like a nice shade of silver. It's gonna make it sparkle and it's gonna make it pop. Yeah, of course, we want our Nerf guns to sparkle. <laughs> Before we take the stuff outside though, I do want to uh, tape it down. I do want to tape portions of it down. Now I would usually use painter's tape, but this is masking tape. It's pretty much almost the same exact stuff. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to cover 
the spots that I don't want paint to get on. So we already said before that there's a nice beautiful little barrel portion here. We need to have a yellow cap seeing how in the United States at least we must have a yellow cap on all of our toy guns even if it's airsoft, if it's nerf, uh, it does not matter. It is a safety thing here in the US. So that part's good to go. These guys can all get spray painted. As long as I don't spray inside here, it should be good to go. So those guys can go off to the side here. This one uh, has a lot of moving parts. Now I'm gonna set it to the exact position we had before whenever we were sanding it. I'm gonna pull the hammer back, which is going to set the hammer. Now you kinda have to fiddle with this to get it to stay put. So I'm gonna leave it in this position here while we spray paint it. And to make sure that's gonna be protected, I'm going to tape the heck out of this. I'm gonna put so much tape over all these working parts. I do not want this thing um, to get ruined because this can happen. If you use a lot of spray paint on working moving parts, you might accidentally ruin it. So we're all taped up. We're all good to go. I'm actually gonna put these oops, on a piece of cardboard. I'm actually gonna put these <laughs> here on the, uh, the box. It's why you save your junk, guys. You save your cardboard, you save your plastic. Uh, what I'm gonna simply do is just do a little, um, roll my tape, set it on there, and that way I could spray it and not lose it. Boop. And boop, that also is a Warhammer trick. You. Uh, you put your models on that, so that way you can get them from all different angles. So that way that'll be done. All right, let's take these pieces outside. Let's get them spray painted. So let's take a look at everything so far. We have our handle, still a little sticky, so I'm probably gonna put you back outside for a little bit longer. We've got our body, which I'm not, I don't know, I'm not 100% on this. Um, I feel like I should have cleaned that up a little bit better, but maybe when it's all said and done, we'll see what it looks like. We've got our barrel, we've got our hammer and our trigger, we've got our chamber, and we've got our two little pieces that are going to go into here. So I'm going to let you sit for a little bit longer, I'm going to definitely let you guys sit for a little bit longer because I mean, look at that, look how still sticky they are. That, that brown's always sticky, honestly. Um, but I'm going to take these guys back out and I'm going to give them a quick little hit with the Army Primer um, plate mail. So let's see how this looks on it. So we took our chamber, which was black, and we gave it a little quick silver. We uh, also did the same with the barrel here. Our two little pieces that are going to go inside of our handle and our trigger and hammer assembly. So let's unwrap this stuff and see how well we did. A uh, little overspray here, but I mean, obviously that's not gonna even matter. You won't even notice that when it's done. So here we go. Here are all of our pieces. We still have our screws. Let's put it back together. First things first, let's... Here we go. All done, all finished, fully painted. She is ready for combat. So the paint still hasn't finished drying on the handle. It's that, it's that darn satin Rust-Oleum. I said it before, I think I liked it, but I don't know, like, it's so sticky still, even after like six hours. So I'll let it cure a little bit longer. But this is it, this is our finished piece. This is the Adventure Force Thundershot. Uh, fully painted now um, and quite shockingly I feel like I need to put like a little amendment <laughs> another asterisk on my review um, modifying this was pretty simple and easy all you have to do is crack it open and remove these these are the little pins inside that hold the darts once you've removed that this thing is good to go. I've tried this with every dart that I have available from our battle box. This is literally the battle bag. I take this to uh, to our, our Wild West LARPs and it is just filled with every sort of Nerf dart you could think of in here. I got some Zuru's, got Waffle Heads, I got third party darts, you named it. 
I tried and threw every single one into this thing, and now it works. I originally thought I was gonna have to like drill out the front here and drill out the side here, drill these parts out so that way the, the dark can come through, but it actually was pretty simple. Um, and I, I wanna kinda give credit where credit is due. Mr. Mikio01 uh, commented the first time over here on our video and said removing the air restrictor sticks might work. Um, and when I popped this thing open and looked inside and saw that that was the issue, I was like, my gosh, Mr. Mikio, uh, you're right. That is the reason. That's how to fix this. So thank you, Mr. Mikio, for your comment in the last video. Uh, you saved me a heck of a lot of work from shaving off these sides here. Now I can get my final, final, final thoughts on this. If you're experienced with uh, modding Nerf guns, pulling them open, pulling pieces out, this is a very simple, easy fix for you to, to, to start with. Even if you aren't experienced, follow the steps of my video here. I did this blind. I popped this thing open, and this is a great gun to start with. Again, it's a $10 gun. If you mess it up, it's only 10 bucks. So start with something like this, crack it open, pull out those air restrictors, um, and go to town. And there you go. This is a pretty easy gun to start with. So now that being said, just simply removing the air restrictors is going to make this gun usable with any type of ammo. That being said, it's still up to you for your personal preference if you don't like the big giant handle, if you don't like the big draw, if you don't like the big size of it, that will be a deal breaker. But my, my uh, previous comment that it doesn't take all nerf darts was incorrect. All you have to do is just make that quick little modification and it can take now anything. So, if you're looking still for an inexpensive, big gun that's gonna make a big name for you, this might be a good choice for you now. Now we have a positive review. <laughs> we finally, we have a positive review now. We are breaking character. This was the Adventure Force Thundershot. Thank you very much for watching. Again, as you heard, I do read all the comments, so please leave a comment below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that youtube stuff. Go look at social media. It's all there. Oh, I can't wait to use this at our next Wild West LARP. See you next time out there, folks. Game over.